a simple question with a not so straightforward answer. Do beans and peas really add nitrogen to your soil? Stick with us while we go into the history, the science, and the practical applications of growing legumes in the garden. History. Since ancient times, farmers have noticed that crops planted after legumes tend to produce more food. This observation led to the practice of crop rotation with legumes to improve soil fertility. In the 1830s, amidst inventions like the telegraph, revolver, and sewing machine, this chemist, Jean-Baptiste Bozegault, grew legumes in nitrogen-depleted soil to explore their effect on soil nitrogen levels. After they grew, he found that the nitrogen in the soil had increased, unlike the non-legumous plants. This discovery indicated that legumes were somehow adding nitrogen to the soil, laying the groundwork for understanding nitrogen fixation, but the exact mechanism remained a mystery. Fast forward to the 1880s, when inventions like the dishwasher and light bulb were being developed, scientist Hermann Hellreigel and Hermann Woolforth discovered that the nodules found in the roots of legumes were crucial for nitrogen fixation and that bacteria played an important role. Later, Martinus Bajernik successfully cultured the bacteria within these nodules. They uncovered that legumes partner with rhizomium bacteria, which reside in the root nodules. These bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen, the nitrogen in the air, into a form that the plant can use in exchange for sugars and a safe environment provided by the plant. Science. Legumes, like peas, are similar to other plants with leaves, stems, and roots. But what makes them special are their root nodules. The roots act as a beacon for the rhizobium bacteria. The bacteria infect the roots, and in response, the roots envelop the clusters of bacteria within the nodules. This is what the nodes look like. While topsoil is not a part of the atmosphere, it is helpful to understand that there is a constant flow of gases between the soil, where the roots are, and the air around us. The bacteria use sugars provided by the plant for energy to convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. Ammonia reacts with water quickly to form ions. It is these ions that are a form the plant can utilize. This partnership is like a busy city market. The plant roots providing the infrastructure and the foot traffic, while the bacteria are the vendors, adding nitrogen, a vital commodity in exchange for sugars and a safe place to live. Together, they create a thriving ecosystem where they both benefit and grow. Practical experiment, fava beans and cow peas. To understand how legumes interact with other plants, let's look at an experiment involving watermelon yields when planted alongside fava beans and cow peas. Fava beans are generous. They surrender their nitrogen to neighboring plants, resulting in increased watermelon yields, but decreased fava bean yields. On the other hand, Cow peas defend their nitrogen, leading to no significant change in the expected yields of both crops. This experiment shows that not all nitrogen-fixing plants interact with their neighbors in the same way. From this, we can conclude that black-eyed peas, cow peas, might not be as generous with their nitrogen, making them a free crop. In terms of not losing yield, to neighboring plants. So will planting legumes, peas and beans and clover with your plants actually help them grow stronger? So the answer is yes and no. Just a brief interruption. Uh, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful so far, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps and I look forward to giving you updates along this whole growing season. 
Yes, legumes do add a net positive amount of nitrogen into the soil throughout their vegetative growth. To maximize this benefit, the plant should be cut at its base as soon as it begins to flower. As the plant dies off and decomposes, it will release its nitrogen accrued through its life cycle and deposit it into its natural environment, thus allowing for future crops or current living crops to benefit from the nitrogen that it has generated. So no, they won't add nitrogen to the soil. And the reason they might not is because if there is no bacteria, there's no nitrogen fixation. While the bacteria is native to the soil, it's not guaranteed to be in the container or the so garden soil that you're planting your legumes in. And this experiment was showed by the Hermans scientists, where they sterilized their soil and then tried to grow legumes. The legume, legumes grew, but there were no nodules, meaning there was no nitrogen fixation. Another reason legumes might not add nitrogen to your soil is if they're allowed to fruit. If they're allowed to fruit, nitrogen that has been created and stored is, is rushed up into the beans and peas to produce the fruit. And that's why beans are high in protein. It's all that nitrogen that they've been able to store up. So if you let them all grow and, and you harvest the beans, then all of that nitrogen is lost or gained in your case. If you, for example, we, we did analyze the experiment with the cowpeas and the fava beans, where fava beans were readily just gave up the nitrogen they produced, the cowpeas held on to it. Now, it didn't affect the growth of the other of the other plants. In this case, I believe it was broccoli. The yield for broccoli was the same as expected, just like the yield for the cowpeas. That means it's like a free crop. Whereas the fava beans, the yield expected was lower. The broccoli, higher. Even though they were allowed to mature fully. Now in this case, was nitrogen added to the soil? Yes, would it be nitrogen for a future plant, future crop? No, they would have been used up to produce the extra yield in broccoli. So with this knowledge, I hope that you are better able to understand how legumes can help you. Help you in whatever current crop that you have growing or a crop that you may want to harvest in the future. For example, in my circumstance, I grew, I tried growing two parts to the three sisters. That is squash, beans, and corn. I left out the beans this year just to see what would happen. And I very quickly found out that the squash took up all the available nitrogen and left the corn struggling. Very pale green and clearly nitrogen deficient. Now, if I had planted beans with that, would the beans have provided the extra nitrogen to the corn? I think so. And I'm gonna be trying that next year. I'm also trying another experiment. I just harvested a few pea plants and in that location, I planted a, a bunch of lettuce and bok choy. And along one side of that bed, I planted a row of peas. My hypothesis is that they'll all do very well without the addition of fertilizers. In addition to that, I believe the rows closest to the peas will be a, a more uh, vibrant green, healthier all around lettuce. Since we know that lettuce is a highly uh, nitrogen dependent plant.